Hello, welcome back to Let's Play Jane's Fighters Anthology. As we continue with the reference materials, we are now on what the game calls the bomber section. So today we will be starting with the A4E Skyhawk. A4E Skyhawk, titled McDonnell Douglas, Douglas Skyhawk. U.S. designation A4, type single seat attack bomber aircraft. Program designed originally to provide the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps with a simple, low-cost, lightweight attack and ground support aircraft, Skyhawk was based on experience gained during the Korean War. Since the initial requirement called for operation by the U.S. Navy, special design consideration was given to providing low-speed control and stability during takeoff and landing, added strength for catapult launch and arrested landings, excuse me, and dimensions that would permit, permit it to negotiate standard aircraft carrier lists without the complexity of folding wings. Construction of the XA-4A, originally X-480, or sorry, XA-41, prototype Skyhawk began in September of 1953, and the first flight of this aircraft was powered by a Wright J-65W2 engine, rated for 32 kilonewtons or 7,200 pounds force, took place 22nd of June 1954. Variants, A4A, formerly A4D1, initial version with J65W4 turbojet engine, rated for 3,493 kil kilograms or 7,700 pounds force. First A4A flew 14th of August 1954, and this version entered service with the U.S. Atlantic and Pacific fleets 26th of October 1956. 166 were built. Uprated engines, 3,855 kilograms or 8,500 pounds force, fitted progressively to all aircraft. A4B, formerly the A4D2, similar to the A4A but with improved bomb delivery system, provision for carrying bullpup missiles, automatic dead reckoning navigation computer, flight refueling capability, both tanker and receiver, dual, dual hydraulic system, stiffer single surface rudder and powered tail, and Wright J65W16A turbojet, 3,493 kilograms, 7,700 pounds force. First flight, 26 of March, 1956, 542 built. 50 reconditioned for Argentine Air Force, upgraded engines, 3,855 kilograms or 8,500 pounds force, fitted progressively to all aircraft. A4C, formerly the A4D2N, Similar to the A4B, but with longer nose to accommodate additional equipment to improve all-weather capability. New items included advanced autopilot, low-altitude bombing, all-altitude indicating gyro system, terrain clearance radar, and angle of attack indicator. First flight, 21st of August, 1958. Deliveries began in 1959. Production completed in December of 1962. 638 built. Operated engines, 3,855 kilograms or 8,500 pounds force. Fitted to all aircraft progressively. The A4E, formerly the A4D5. Increased payload in 27% greater range, powered by a Pratt & Whitney J52P6A turbojet with 8,500 pounds force or 3,855 kilograms force. Douglas Escape Zero Height 90 Knot Rocket Ejection Seat, four underwing and one under fuselage bomb racks. Or Able to carry as many as 20 different items weighing up to 8,200 pounds or 3,720 kilograms total. First flight, 12th of July 1961, deliveries to the U.S. Navy began in November 1962. 499 built, 43 reported to have been supplied to Israel, production completed. TA-4E, original designation of prototypes of TA-4F. A-4F. Attack bomber with J-52P-8A turbojet jet rated at 41.4 kilonewtons or 9,300 pounds force. New lift spoilers on wings to shorten landing run by up to 305 meters or 1,000 feet. Nose wheel steering, low pressure tires, uh, zero zero ejection seat, additional bullet and flak resistant materials to protect pilot, uprated or updated electronics contained in fairing hump aft the cockpit prototype blue for the first time 31st of august 1966. deliveries to u.s navy began 20th of june 1967 and were completed in 1968 excuse me with 146 built ea4f tandem two seat dual control trainer version of a4f for u.s navy fuselage extended 0.71 meters or two feet four inches 
fuselage fuel tank is reduced to 379 liters or what or by 100 U.S. gallons or by 83.3 Imperial gallons. Pratt & Whitney J52 P6 or 8A engines optional. Douglas Escape it rocket ejection seats provision to carry full range of weapons available for A4F. Reduced electronics first prototype flew 30th of June 1965. Deliveries to the U.S. Navy began in 1966. A4G, similar to the A4F for the Royal Australian Navy, equipped to carry Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles, first of eight delivered 26th of July 1967. TA-4G, similar to the TA-4F for Royal Australian Navy, first of two delivered 26th of July 1967. A4H, designation of version supplied to Israel. Delivery of an initial batch of 48 in 1967 to 1968, followed by 60 more by early 1972. Retrofitted with Raphael Mahat lightweight analog weapons delivery system. TA-4H, tandem two-seat trainer version of the A4H for Israel, 10 delivered. TA-4J, tandem two-seat trainer, basically a simplified version of the TA-4F, ordered for the U.S. Naval Air Advanced Training Command under a $26.834 million contract, followed by a further contract in mid-1971. Deletion of the following equipment, although provisions retained. Radar, dead reckoning navigation system, low-altitude bombing system, air-to-ground missile weapon systems, weapons delivery computer, and automatic release, intervalometer, meter. Gun pods, standard stores, pylons, in flight refueling system, and spray tank provisions. Addition and relocation of certain instruments J 52 P 6 engine standard, provision for J 52 P 8A engine, and combat electronics. Prototype flew in May 1969, and the first four were delivered to the U.S. Navy 6 of June 1969. A 4K Similar to the A4F for the Royal New Zealand Air Force, different radio and braking parachute first to 10 delivered to the Royal New Zealand Air Force 16th of January 1970. A4KU, designation of 30 aircraft similar to the A4M for Kuwait Air Force, deliveries began in spring of 1977. TA4K, similar to the TA4F for Royal New Zealand Air Force, the first of four was handed over 16th of January 1970. TA-4KU, designation of six aircraft similar to the TA-4F for Kuwait Air Force. A-4L, modification of A-4C with upgraded engine, bombing, computing system, and electronics relocated in fairing hump after cockpit as on A-4F. Delivered to U.S. Navy Reserve Carrier Air Wing in December of 1969. A-4M Skyhawk II, similar to the A-4F. But with J 52 P 408 turbojet rated at 50 kilonewtons or 11,200 pounds force and braking parachute standard, making possible combat operation from 1,220 meter or 4,000 feet fields, and claimed to increase combat effectiveness by 30%. Larger windscreen and canopy, windscreen bullet resistant, increased ammunition capacity for 20 millimeter cannon. More powerful generator, provision of wind-driven backup generator, and self-contained engine starter. First of two prototypes flew for the first time, excuse me, 10th of April 1970. About 50 initially ordered for U.S. Marine Corps, the first of which was delivered 3rd of November 1970. Further order was placed subsequently in the fiscal year 76 budget, included $70 million for the procurement of a final 24 aircraft. Funds also allocated for the installation of improved electronic warfare equipment in service aircraft and for the continued development of an angle rate bombing system or ARBS for future installation in A4Ms. See A4Y. Description The following description applies to the A4M aircraft. Design features Cantilever low wing monoplane, sweep back 33 degrees at wing quarter cord with all metal 3 spar structure. Spars machined from solid plate in one piece tip to tip. One piece wing skins, variable incidence tailplane. Structure The fuselage is an all metal semi monocoque structure in two sections. Rear section removable for engine servicing. Detachable nose over communications and navigation equipment. Integral flak resistant armor and cockpit area with internal armor plate below and forward to cockpit. The tail unit is a cantilever all metal structure. Landing gear. Hydraulically retractable tricycle type with single wheel on each unit. All units retract forward, free fall emergency extension. Main legs pre shortened for retraction and wheels turned through 90 degrees to stow horizontally in wings. Power plant. 
150 kilonewton or 11,200 pound force Pat, Pratt and Whitney J52 P408 triple jet engine fuel and integral wing tanks and self-sealing fuselage tank aft and cockpit total capacity 3,028 liters or 800 US gallons or 666 imperial gallons. 1,568, 1,136, or 1,514 liter, or 150, or 300, or 400 U.S. gallon, or 125, 250, or 333 imperial gallon, auxiliary tank can be carried on the under fuselage bomb rack, and 1,568, or 1,136 liter, or 150, or 300 U.S. gallon, or 125, or 250 imperial gallon auxiliary tank on each of the inboard underwing racks. Maximum fuel capacity internal plus auxiliary tank 6,814 liters or 1,800 US gallons or 1,498 Imperial gallons. Large refueling probe can be carried on starboard sided nose. Douglas developed self contained flight refueling unit can also be carried on the under fuselage standard bomb shackles provision for JATO. Accommodation pilot on Douglas escape back. 1G300 lightweight ejection seat and large cockpit enclosure to improve pilot's view with rectangular bullet-resistant windscreen. Systems electronics includes Bandex automatic flight control, ARC-159 UHF radio transceiver, ARA-50 UHF direction finder, APX-72 IFF Marconi Elliott AVQ-24 heads-up display system, Douglas angle of attack indicator, electronic countermeasures, ASN-41 nav computer, APM 153V radar nav, ARC 114 VHF FM radio transceiver, ARR 69 auxiliary radio receiver, ARN 84 TACAN, and APN 194 radar altimeter. Armament provision for several hundred variations of military load carried externally on one under fuselage rack, capacity 1,588 kilograms or 3,500 pounds. Two inboard underwing racks, capacity of each 1,020 kilograms or 2,250 pounds, and two outboard underwing racks, capacity of each 450 kilograms or 1,000 pounds. Weapons that can be deployed include nuclear or high explosive bombs, air to air and air to surface rockets, Sidewinder infrared missiles, full pup air to surface missiles, ground attack gun pods, torpedoes, countermeasures equipment, and so on. Two 20mm Mark 12 cannons in wing root standard, each with 200 rounds of ammunition. Def a 30mm cannon available as optional on international versions with 150 rounds of ammunition per gun. Dimensions external Wingspan 8.38 meters or 27 feet 6 inches. Wing cord at root 4.72 meters or 15 feet 6 inches. Length overall, excluding flight refueling probe. A4M 12.29 meters or 40 feet 4 inches. Height overall A4M 4.57 meters or 15 feet 0 inches. Areas, wings, gross 24.16 meters squared or 260 square feet. Vertical tail surfaces total 4.65 meters squared or 50 square feet. Horizontal tail surfaces total 4.54 meters squared or 48.85 square feet. Weights and loadings, weight empty A4F 4,500 81 kilograms or 10,010 pounds. Sorry, 10,100 pounds. For the A4M, 4,899 kilograms or 10,800 pounds. Normal takeoff weight for the A4F&M, 11,113 kilograms or 24,500 pounds. A4F from land base, 12,437 kilograms or 27,420 pounds. Export version only. Overload condition not authorized by U.S. Navy. Performance and combat weight, max level speed, TA4F, 568 knots or 1,052 kilometers per hour or 654 miles per hour. Max level speed with 1,814 kilograms or 4,000 pound bomb load, A4F, 548 knots or 1,015 kilometers per hour or 631 miles per hour. A4M, 561 knots or 1,040 kilometers per hour or 646 miles per hour. Max rate of climb, ISA at sea level, A4F 2,440 meters or 8,000 feet per minute, A4M 3,410 meters or 10,300 feet per minute. Rate of climb ISA at 7,620 meters, 25,000 feet, A4F 1,097 meters or 3,600 feet per minute, A4M 1,463 meters or 4,800 feet per minute. 
Takeoff run at 10,433 kilograms or 23,000 pounds takeoff weight. A4M 1,030 meters or 3,380 feet. A4M 832 meters or 2,730 feet. Max ferry range A4M at 11,113 kilograms or 24,500 pounds. Takeoff weight with max fuel. Standard reserves 1,740 nautical miles or 3,225 kilometers or 2,000 miles. Length 12.29 meters, height 4.57 meters, wingspan 6.38 meters, max level speed in knots 568, takeoff run 1,030 meters, max rate of climb 2,440 meters per minute. So with that we can finally look at the 3D model. Unfortunately, ooh, that's interesting, that is something I never noticed in the campaign. But uh, they have the refueling probe system here, so you can see it's on the starboard side. And it's a rather large installation compared to uh, the ones we think of with modern uh, combat aircraft, at least American ones. This here is the electronics hump that they repeatedly talked about. And we can see it's a very small aircraft, which actually, despite its role as a subsonic attack aircraft, makes it highly maneuverable, which is why even... Well, I think they might have finally been phased out, but for the longest time... These were used as aggressors at uh, Top Gun, as I'm sure people know if they ever watched the uh, Top Gun movie, which honestly, if you're here, you probably have. And then on some views, we can, there we go. We can sometimes see the hook from the sides. The game doesn't have the parachute option. We can see there's a radio transceiver there. There's actually a lot of detail put into this aircraft. You got the two air inlets for the single Pratt Whitney turbofan here. Or actually, this is A4E, so that would have been... Uh, was it a General Electric engine? Let me check here. Uh, bah, bah, bah. Uh, A4E. Nope, it, they moved the Pratt Whitney by then. What was the original engine? Wright J65. Okay. So yeah, the A4M is like the super modernized version that really saw most use in foreign service, but... And that you even got the... What I assume is supposed to be rust from uh, just being out at sea for so long. But yeah, there we go. There's the... Oh, this is the... Uh... So it's... Okay, so you see that. And there... I wonder if those are, yeah, those are definitely supposed to be the 20 millimeter cannons too. So actually, a lot of detail on this aircraft versus some of the other aircraft we've seen. Very impressive, and it's unfortunate that most people probably don't even get a chance to notice this because they aren't, you know, they don't go through the reference materials like this one by one, so they don't get the opportunity to you know, pick out the details like this in a calm environment where we aren't, you know, <laughs> where you have full control of the camera around the aircraft and you aren't being attacked by enemy aircraft or SAM systems or something. But with that being said, I think that will do us for now. So with that, thank you all for watching and stay tuned for next time and stay safe out there and we'll see you then.